Hey, Stewart Chapel, this is Don Pearson and Don Counts, and this is Friday's, Friday's Devotion. And we're going to continue our discussion about our call to reach the loss and at the same time the working the balance between separation or holiness and loving and, and doing what Jesus did, uh, eating and sitting with publicans and sinners for the purpose of salvation. Now, if you haven't figured it out, as I began to look at each of these groups, if you have not noticed it yet, you need to pay attention. Most of these individuals are among God's people, which is interesting. Most of them are not what you and I would be considering lost, but they are lost. But we are often deceived by them. They're usually the ones sitting with us. And most of the warnings in Scripture to Christians in relationship to separation, most of them are in relationship to those who sit with us who are really not walking with the Lord. The first we looked at, if you remember, was the legalists or the Pharisees. Jesus was constantly warning the disciples and others of the leaven of the Pharisees. They're the most convincing because they have an extreme form of religion. They can quote scripture. They tithe. They attend. They, they do everything that most Christians would say was an excellent Christian. But they are bound by a legal, legalism. And they don't even know it. They can't help it. They're, it consumes them. Legalists or Pharisees give birth to Pharisees. And so when you're around that type, it doesn't take long before you become one. And it doesn't matter what form it is. It takes various forms. We also looked at the wicked and evil people found in Proverbs and in the churches of Revelation. They're in the church. Often I call them predators. They're, they're predators that are within. They're wolves among the sheep. Uh, and then uh, yesterday we looked at the fools. The fools. They're extremely persuasive. They are convinced that they are right. And, uh, and they, they take captive whole households by their influence. Uh, actually, uh, um, I skipped one. One was... Bad influences. Um, and where we talk about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, where it says bad company corrupts good character. Corrupts good character. And that, that can be, and a lot of these can be outside of the church, but this also can be inside the church. And I can tell you right now, I've seen that many, many times. I've watched, and especially with young teenage boys or young men, one will come into the church, will have all the form of holiness, righteousness, of salvation, but will literally lead, will lead like a shepherd, a bad, wicked shepherd, will literally lead others to their captivity in various ways. Today, this group is also in the church, and I'm going to read three scriptures, three scriptures. I'm going to read to you Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Romans 16, chapter, chapter 16, verse 17. Now look what he says. Now I urge you, brethren, note or take note or pay attention to those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learn and what? Avoid them. These are individuals that are inside. They, ha they have a tendency to cause and to stir up division and create offenses or stumbling blocks basically because of their teachings or their way of life. And the scripture states very clearly, Paul states very clearly, you are to avoid them, avoid them. And then over in um, 1 Timothy chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, Verse 3, I'm sorry, chapter, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy, chapter 6, chapter 6 of 1 Timothy, verses 3 through 5. 
If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus, and to the doctrine which accords with holiness, that's the key. The teaching and the doctrine that these individuals are teaching do not lead to holiness or godliness. And remember, our subject is about walking and, and, um, in the midst of lost people. And generally, we think that's outside. And at the same time, maintaining holiness. Well, these individuals, uh, through their words and their teaching, uh, do, uh, do, not, do not create godliness. They are proud, knowing nothing. They think they know something. They think they know everything. I recognize this as, as that fool of Proverbs. Knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes. I mean, hear that Romans 6 coming, 16 coming out again. They, they're just all about uh, division. But this dispute is different. This is not just division, arguing. They're always arguing their point of view. They're always arguing. They're always trying to prove that they are right. Disputes with arguments over words. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Over words. Oh, my goodness. Now, how many times have I sat around and watched people argue over words? From which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicion, useless, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Now, they don't know that, okay? If they were here, they would be over there nodding their head right now and saying, Yeah, that ain't me. That's exactly right. Who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. Listen. They suppose that godliness is a means of gain. That godliness, and there are several ways of interpreting that. One is that godliness is something that you earn or make. It could be that your, your appearance of godliness gains you something with others. But it could also be that they lower the standard of what God, godliness is. But look what it says. From such, withdraw yourself. So in Romans, he says, avoid them. In 1 Timothy, he says to withdraw. In other words, just come away from them. Get, get away from them. And then it says, now godliness with contentment is great gain, but not the kind of godliness that they're offering. Withdraw. One other scripture, and it's found in 2 John. 2 John, only one chapter in 2 John, verses 9, 10, and 11. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Now, the doctrine there, there's, there's the doctrine, and when you say doctrine of Christ, there, there's the whole idea of holiness, there's the whole idea of the doctrine of that Christ is the Lord, and He alone is the Lord, and He is God in the flesh, and He raised from the dead so much more there. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house nor greet him, for he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. Wow, that's pretty strong language. In fact, have you noticed that all three of these warnings, two from Paul, one from John, all declare that we are to take decisive, decisive and intentional action as Christians to these kind of individuals that come among us. We are to avoid them. We are to withdraw from them. We're not even to allow to invite them or receive them into our home, nor even greet them. For greeting them causes us to share or to partake in their evil deeds. Wow. Wow. Now I bet you got a lot of questions. So do I. I'm telling you, these teachings about false teachers, divisive individuals are hard 
but I'm telling you at the same time, you refuse to do this. You become a partaker in their evilness as well. Love you, Stuart Chapel.